So Carter, I want to do this little aside with you. Maybe this, maybe this will... episode about something or other. What is this? This is just a little rant. It doesn't belong in a kafefi, but everybody's talking about the little mermaid, right? And how people are supposedly upset that about the, her race, that she's black. I don't, I don't know anyone who cares what race she is. I think that's a manufactured outrage. Well, must not hang out in the right uh, white supremacist circles, Carrie. I'm sure. I'm sure it's big over at Fox News. I'm sure they're all wailing at that there's a black woman who might play. I no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think anyone cares. <laughs> but I think they're trying to create this narrative that people care. I did um, see the story. I saw. I did see a story, Carrie, where they 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 had like four Twitter accounts who complained about it, and they were all you know anonymous or egg Twitter accounts with like you know two followers or 10 followers or whatever so uh there's definitely some there's definitely some fake outrage out there and that's enough to respond to mm, mm, fake outrage well so anyway what it made me think of was that i actually my issue with the little mermaid like the disney version is just that it doesn't like people are talking about the the disney version that we know as if it's canon it's not it doesn't stick to the original Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale and which is much darker so I get why Disney can't do that but <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine Disney <laughs> so the so I got out my old childhood Hans Christian Andersen and I was reading through it and it's excellent and uh I just wanted to I don't think people know I mean a lot of these a lot of these are much darker than the Disney versions I don't think people know the Little Mermaid apart from Disney do you want to tell people yeah Something? I don't know. So she basically saves the prince's life, but he doesn't meet her or anything really. And she kisses him without his consent, by the way, while, when she say, lays him on the beach. And then she like stalks him for a while and comes <laughs> and watches him and stuff. The sea. Hmm? She's the Glenn Close of the sea. <laughs> the Glenn Close of the sea. <laughs> Um, when she, so then, and then when she, she'd go, oh, oh, and when she does the deal with the sea witch, um, she, the sea witch doesn't just make her mute. They, she cuts her tongue off, which is very, like, she cuts her tongue out so she can't speak again. Um, she gets, you know, she trades her voice for her feet and she goes up on land and she's his little mute. She becomes the prince's, like, little pet. And she can't talk to him. And he falls in love. Hmm? He doesn't love her. No, he doesn't love her. He falls in love with someone else and he marries someone else. And then the, the, her sisters tell her the sea witch made this exception. Like you can, you can live, mermaids are supposed to live 300 years. Oh, and there's a bunch of stuff in it about God and like how humans have an immortal soul, but mermaids don't. Mermaids okay. live 300 years and then they're done. And the only way mermaids can get an immortal soul is if a human man falls in love with them and thinks about them nonstop over anyone else. Feminists will love that. <laughs> Feminists, yes, I'm sure would have a problem with that. So, cause then the man will like give her a soul or something. So, so anyway, they make an exception. They say she, so she's gonna turn to sea foam. Part of the deal was she has a certain time limit. If he, if he marries someone else instead of her, if he falls in love with someone else, then the morning after his wedding or what have you, she's gonna turn into foam on the sea. And so they're on a ship. She's on the ship with him and his new wife, his new bride. And the sisters come and are like, oh, but there's a way out. If you just go and plunge a dagger, this dagger into him, if you murder your beloved, you can live for another 300 years. And she creeps in there and contemplates it, but she can't do it. And then so she suicides herself over the side of the boat. Like she turns into sea foam in the dawn. That, can you imagine Disney? Sorry. <laughs> It's a great, and then, okay, but then this is a very interesting part because all of these dark fairy tales like this and Grimm's, uh, Hans Christian Andersen and the Grimm's fairy tales, they, they, they will have this really dark story. And then at the end, they're like, and that's why children, you should be good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at the end, she turns into sea foam and you think that's it for her, right? But she gets lifted up by the daughters of the air. And they basically, re they reiterate mermaids have no immortal soul. Um, the only way they can have one is if they obtain the love of a human being, blah, blah, blah. But we, the daughters of the air, have not received an eternal soul either, but we can win one through good deeds. 
Um, so they basically say you have to be uh, good for 300 years, do good things, and then you'll be lifted up. You'll have an eternal soul and you'll be lifted up to be with God. And so she says, in 300 years, I shall rise like this into God's kingdom. And they say, you may be able to go there before that, whispered one of the others to her. Invisibly, we fly through the homes of human beings. They can't see us, so they don't know when we are there. But if we find a good child who makes his parents happy and deserves their love, we smile and God takes a year away from the time of our trial. But if there is a naughty and mean child in the house we come to, we cry. And for every tear we shed, God adds a day to the 300 years we must already serve. The end. That's how Little Mermaid ends. <laughs> That's the ending. That's, you know, Carrie, it's, um, it's an early version of the Elf on the Shelf. Do you know the Elf on the Shelf thing? Re Parents? Just remind me. It's like a super creepy, I hate it. If you do this as a parent, just unsubscribe. Uh, I, I, I really hate it. They, they take this That's elf. That's a little harsh, Carter. I know. <laughs> uh, just, you can just mute when I'm talking, uh, but still subscribe and listen to Carrie. They take this elf and they stick it on the shelf around Christmas time and they tell kids, it's basically like Big Brother, and they tell kids like, oh, the elf is watching and he can see if you're naughty or nice and if you're doing anything naughty or if you're doing anything nice and he's going to go tell Santa every night, he reports back to Santa and then while the kid's sleeping, they move the elf around the house. So the kid's like freaked out in this creepy, weird Big Brother world where like there's an elf that looks an awful lot just like a toy or a doll but apparently it's magically alive and it's telling Santa whether I'm, it's like watching everything I do and reporting back. It's just a creepy, freaky thing. Um, that is kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. But it he also reminds me of the of Arrested Development. The, uh, that's why kids, you never, or you always do this or you never do that. I don't think you watched, I think you said. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to, can I play an Arrested Development clip? Because so you can see how it's, Arrested Development, basically George Bluth is the modern Hans Christian Andersen with his brilliance. <laughs> so, here, hold on, I'll, I'll play this clip. See, you're as bad as dad with his ridiculous lessons. George Sr. had used his considerable means to stage intricate scenarios to teach his children what he considered valuable life lessons. I need help. I'll get my gear. Typically, these scenarios would involve a man named J. Walter Weatherman, a one-time employee who lost his arm in a Bluth Company construction accident. Why are you here? I remember. We're out of milk. I could have got it earlier if someone would have left a note. Why? If someone had left a note, this was innocent man would still have his arm. Why? That's why you always leave a note. <laughs> well, those lessons work, didn't they? I mean, we still leave notes to this day. Oh, that's what that was about. Mm. I thought he was trying to get us off dairy. <laughs> that, that is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> is that like a recurring thing they do? Yeah, they do it a few times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's about this horribly dysfunctional family. Uh, but <laughs> for obvious reasons, uh, they're dysfunctional. But yeah, and that's that, why you always leave a note, kids. He always hires the same one-eyed guy to teach them, or one-eyed, uh, one-armed guy to teach them lessons. <laughs> there are always these stupid lessons like that. Like that's why you always leave a note about milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Oh my goodness, I might have to watch that. Well, okay, so, uh, <laughs> banned for playing a clip of an episode. Yeah, we should. This should be called like what. The Little Mermaid has in common with Curb Your Enthusiasm. Or Arrested Development. Oh, sorry, the wrong show. <laughs> this is how little I <laughs> <laughs> No, I think we should title it what it has to do with Curb Your Enthusiasm and just leave it there. That's the title. <laughs> you come up with the title, Carrie, that's what we're going with. <laughs> sorry. Just people until There's... they get to this part at the end of the video. Do those titles live in the same place in my head, in the same file box? <laughs> okay. Well, On that note, should we, should we end this? Uh, you w wait, do you want to? Hey, wanna well. Talk, right, you want to talk more about this stuff. 
Yeah, because I have I have the Hans Christian Andersen. These are um, from when I was a kid. I can't believe I read these dark things when I was a kid. But you know, nowadays we would probably think this is too dark for children. But um, the and I also have Grimm's. So, sure. yeah, yeah. I think it would be fun to go through these. It was fun to read that one again. Yeah, I, I think there's probably uh, we could probably wokeify them. That probably needs to happen. I'm sure they're not woke enough as fairy tales. Make them SJW. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Carrie, for this distraction this morning. Well, hey, this video will get at least one like, because I like it. You like it too? Okay, cool. No one else feel obliged to like or share this video. (laughs) Bye, guys.